Good morning, my sweet angels. All right, timer is set. Are you ready to cause some drama? Because where we left off, okay, is right here with all the Punic War stuff. Yeah, like we've taken over all this land and now we're about to cause the biggest chaos you've ever seen. It's so messed up, it's just awesome. Okay, so we are starting in your notes right here, collapse of the Republic, all right? And let's go to your pictures. If you remember, which you should, um, this right here, everything in color is Rome, all right? They got Italy all united earlier. That was the first thing they did. Then they come over here and they nail Greece. Then in the first Punic War against Carthage, they get Sicily. And then the second Punic War with the whole Hannibal thing, remember how he takes the elephants up here and then you know, they all die and oh my gosh, that's so sad, okay, whatever. Um, he gets the, or they get the islands and then Rome gets part of Spain. Well, Carthage is part of Spain. And then with the third Punic War, which was like the surprise to Carthage, um, now Rome has this, okay? Okay, look at that land. Do you remember when we talked about um, like owning land is very important in Rome? Yeah. If you own land, you're a what social status? Patrician. And if you're a patrician, you get to vote. Okay. Look at all this land we have added to the Roman Empire. All of these plebeians who actually have wealth, especially the merchants and stuff, all these plebeians who actually have wealth are like, uh, I want some land in Africa. I want some land in Spain or whatever. Okay, it was actually called Iberia at that point, but who cares? Um, so anyway, they're, they're going to the Senate and they're like requesting to buy land. Most of them are getting stopped every time. Why? Oh, um, that patrician guy over there uh, has already bought it. Really, it doesn't say it's bought. Yeah, he bought, you're gonna buy that land, right? Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's, he's buying it right now. Um, the patricians are blocking most plebeian, plebeian families. Um, of course, some plebeian families are going to be able to get land. All right, but not many, okay? Why? One word, vote. If you're a patrician, you get to vote. Well, the patricians don't want more people voting. More people voting, and more lower class people voting <clears throat> means they can outvote the rich. Guys, there's always going to be more lower class than upper class, even today. So if all of the lower class gets some, I shouldn't say all, if a lot of the upper class can buy some land, now we've got lower class mindset who are now upper class who can vote. It's all about the vote. And if you've been in the military for 10 years, you could be voted into the Senate. Oh, God forbid, we have a plebeian who's now a patrician put into the Senate. What could he do? Oh, my coffee's hot. That's the real issue. Well, we have a couple of guys. Do you remember the tribunes? The job of the tribunes, they are plebeians who are put into um, the Senate and their job is to speak for the plebeians. That's their job. They look out for the plebeians, okay? We have a couple of tribunes here. We lovingly just call them the Gracchus brothers. 
You look at that, you're like, Gracchus? Gracchus. The Gracchus brothers. Here are the Gracchus brothers. I'm trying to remember their names. Marcus and... I, don't, I can't remember. Is it Gaius? Or is it... I don't remember who cares what their first names are. Um, but the Gracchus brothers are our two tribunes. Yes, they're brothers. Okay. These aren't tribunes who can be controlled by the Senate. A lot of the tribunes in the past would do whatever the Senate said because they wanted to keep their position. I mean, the Senate might kick them out, right? They're plebeians, they're not patricians. So it's kind of like a gift that we're letting you be here, right? Well, the Gracchus brothers are not like that. And plebeians want this land. And y'all, I mean, honestly, look at all this land that Rome has gotten from the, the whatever they're called, the Punic Wars. Oh my gosh, I can't change the page. There we go. Look at all this land. That's ridiculous for like 10% of the population to own all of that. So the Gracchus brothers start really, 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 really pushing for land reform. There has to be some kind of law, some kind of bill that we can put through. That's not fair. People should be able to buy land. If they can pay for it, let them have it. Right? Well, the people of Rome love the Gracchus brothers. They support them totally. The Senate is like, ugh, we gotta do something to get rid of these guys. And would you believe the Gracchus brothers just mysteriously disappear one day? Well, where'd they go? Hmm. One of their bodies, I don't remember which one, uh, washes up bloated in the Tiber River. Oops. Did he drown? What do you think happened? We don't know. Historically speaking, we don't know. But what do you assume? Because I guarantee what you assume is exactly what the Roman people assumed. And all Hades breaks loose. There are riots and revolts and what we would think of as like protests today. It's just constant all around the Senate building. People are mad and y'all, maybe they should be. Look at all that land that they're not allowed to buy. Things are getting crazy. And we need some stability. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get stability yet. Okay. This next word in your notes, try um vibrate. Triumvirate. Try means three. Okay. When, <coughs> sorry. When you have a government that is a triumvirate, okay, you have three men, in theory, sharing equal power. Uh, you and I both know that's not possible, okay? But theoretically, that's what it is. Three men equally sharing power, okay? Okay, listen, we do still have the Republic at this point, all right? Um, the Republic hasn't collapsed yet. We still have the Senate and we still have the consuls and we still have the praetors and everything. We're good to go. But we do have this group of three men who kind of join together. And in all honesty, they're running the show. They're controlling everything, okay? The first guy that you have was a general and a really rich guy named Marcus Crassus. Marcus Crassus, for those of us with lisps, that's a hard name to say. I have to really think to say it. Marcus Crassus. All right, Marcus Crassus is from a crazy rich family. He is a general, okay? But he hasn't been like 
massively successful. I mean, he's a success. It's, I mean, if he wasn't, they would remove him. Okay. But he hasn't had that one victory. That one, it's going to make him like amazing until now. There was a huge slave revolt right at this point. Huge, massive, the biggest slave revolt we've seen by this guy, um, oh crap, I just forgot, Spartacus. And nobody could get him. Nobody could defeat him. Nobody could, it was a mess. Marcus Crassus with one of his high ranking officers, who's not yet a general, Julius Caesar. His name is actually like uh, Gaius Caesar of the Julii or something, but we call him Julius Caesar, okay? Um, Caesar is in the military, high ranking military with Crassus, okay? He's not quite yet a general, but he, he's, he's two seconds, so who cares, okay? Um, they are fighting Spartacus. Well, so is this guy. He is another general. He has a crazy long name too. We just know him as Pompey. Pompey. It's not Pompey. If it was Pompey, it'd be spelled differently. Pompey. Well, Pompey is a general. Crassus is a general. They're both trying to stop Spartacus. Crassus and Caesar defeat him. Yes, this is the like winning moment that Crassus has been waiting for. This is his like triumphant thing, yeah? Except when they get back to the city of Rome, people are praising Pompey for defeating Spartacus. Why? Because Pompey said he did. What the heck? I can't, I don't know. Why did Pompey do it? I, I don't know. Why did um, Crassus let him? I don't know. What the heck? Pompey tells everybody that his, his, his men <clears throat> are who defeated Spartacus. Uh, historically speaking, we know that's not accurate. It's Crassus, Crassus and Caesar. Um, Crassus goes ahead and like accepts that Pompey has done this because he feels like it would be dishonorable to not. Seriously? I'd be the first one standing up going, uh, no, my men bled and died. But regardless, am I allergies? Regardless, that starts kind of an issue between Pompey and Crassus, all right? But they're both important generals. They're both in the Senate. At different times, they're going to be consuls, okay? At some point, Julius Caesar goes to them and says, okay, look, Crassus, you have half the Senate. Well, not really half, that's a lie. You have a big chunk of the Senate. Pompey, a big chunk follows you. But you can't get your laws passed. He says, I know how to do it. What laws? Pompey and Crassus, they are patricians, okay? But they want a law passed that will allow plebeians to buy land. Now, it's gonna be crazy expensive. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, plebeian military men to buy land. Um, what they're trying to do is reward their, their men who fought and, and died. Oh, I guess they're not rewarding the men who died. The men who fought and bled in their campaigns. All right? That's what they're trying to do. Do they want to create a whole bunch of new patricians? No. But think about this. If I fought and bled and my brother died in the war, and I'm allowed to buy land, who am I going to be loyal to? Well, probably the man who let me do that. Marcus Crassus and Pom uh, Pompey are thinking, okay, if we let some of our military men buy land and then they become patricians, 
they're going to be loyal to us and they're going to vote however we tell them to. They're not politicians like we are. They're soldiers and they're used to taking orders. They'll do what we tell them. Problem is the Senate won't pass that law, even though those two men have big like pockets of support. The Senate won't pass it. Caesar comes along and says, I, I know how to make them pass it. We now have this weird, shaky alliance that we today call the triumvirate. They didn't walk around calling themselves the first triumvirate. By the way, if there's a first, there's going to be a second. And both of them end disgustingly bad. So just spoiler alert. Um, so anyway, Caesar comes along and says, all right, I know what to do. Well, Caesar just threatens and beats up senators. <laughs> yep, government corruption at its finest. Um, he just bulldozes them. He threatens them. He beats them up uh, so that they're voting the way Pompey and Crassus want them to. Unfortunately, it gets a little bit too public. And Crassus and Pompey are like, dude, enough is enough, man. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Sorry. The deal that Caesar made was that if Pompey and Crassus would make Caesar a consul, then he would strong arm everybody and get them to vote their way. Sorry, I forgot that. So Crassus and Pompey did put um, Caesar in the consul position. I mean, it's a voted position, but, you know, <laughs> corruption. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that. Caesar's a consul. So anyway, um, Caesar's just strong arming people, threatening them. Eventually, Crassus and Pompey go to Caesar and they're like, dude, you're getting too public and people are talking about this and it doesn't look good. Step down. Caesar's like, what? They say you need to step down. I'm going to tell you this over and over and over this year. You have got, as a leader, to be so careful who your generals are. Because the military will follow them, not you, a king. Or in the, I mean, I know Crassus and Pompey are generals, but they're like old guys. They're old guy generals. Caesar's like, you know, I don't know, 30s or 40s at this time. So, I mean, he's a little bit more like the people, right? They're the old guys. The military is not going to follow them. They're going to do whatever their direct general says. I mean, think about it this way, honestly. All right. If I'm teaching in class. Yeah. And I don't know. The teacher across the hall throws the door open and they're like, Sherilyn, you're not the king anymore. Of this classroom. I'm in charge. Students, get out your books and do what I say. What are you going to do? I know what you're going to do. All of your little 30 eyeballs are going to look at me and go, do we have to listen to that person? Why? Because you're not loyal to them, even though they might be higher up than me, even though they might be my department chair, my boss. You're going to look at me. Why? Because I am your direct general. Uh -huh, that sounds cool. I'm a general. Okay, so... You have to be careful who your generals are, because if Caesar wants to, which he will, he could take over the government with the backing of the military. We're going to see this again and 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 again, again this whole year. Um, probably the most famous that you've heard of um, is Napoleon. Napoleon totally overthrows the government. Why? Because he's got the military behind him. There's others, but that's the big name that you probably already know. You got to be careful. Caesar does feel pressure. And so he does step down as consul. But he has a plan. He's like, you know what? I know how I can get power and support back. I'll just go conquer more land. So Caesar's going to go up north. Okay, look, 
this word right here, gull, gull. Um, if we look at your map, oops, oh, I forgot to show you these pictures. I'll go back to that in a minute. If we look at the map right here, okay, um, gull is up here. Today, it's mostly modern day France and a little tiny bit of like what we considered Germany today, all right? But it's basically this. Um, the people that live up here, I'm gonna talk more about them in upcoming videos, but they're Germanic tribal peoples. These are my peoples. Um, these are the people who after Rome falls, they're gonna create modern day Europe, all right? But they're tribal peoples. And most of the tribes in this area are the Gaelic tribes. So you have the Gauls, you have the Celts, you have all these different groups. Um, there are some Saxons in here already. The Angles are already starting to go up to Britannia. So there's all these different like Germanic tribes, okay? They're not German, but they're the same people group and they have the same like, it's not the same language, but it's a tie to German. Um, and then they have like the same basic culture and stuff like that, all right? But they are still very tribal at this point. To the Germans, they're the barbarians. They don't live civilized. They're dirty and they're warriors all the time, like Rome isn't, um, and they're unclean and they're all hairy and unshaven and ugh. That's kind of the viewpoint. OK, so he just decides, you know, what? I'm going up here and I'm just going to take over land. So he takes his men north. Without Senate approval. Huh, oops. You just kind of forgot for that to happen. We'll come back to that. Meanwhile. Revolts in Rome. Are continuing to occur because even though Caesar is like threatening people and strong arming people and beating people up and all kinds of good stuff, um, it's not working the way he wants. People still aren't able to get land. Not cool, man. We have all this land sitting here that patricians haven't even bought yet. Frustrating, right? Up here. Caesar fights for a long time. A lot of his men die. A lot of Germanic peoples die. I can't remember them. There's a guy who has a crazy name, Atta something. It starts with an A. It's a really cool name, but he's a, one of the barbarian kings and he fights Caesar tooth and nail. He will not give up until he literally has to. can't change the picture. Okay, look at this. Italy and Greece are already in Rome. All of this green stuff was conquered in the Punic Wars. Uh, yeah, this kind of dark pink, Caesar did it. Now, that's not totally true. Caesar did this, but at the same time, there were some other generals that were getting this stuff over here. Um, but basically, Caesar's going to get Gaul. Now, he gets this section first, and then men are going to start moving out. But look at this. That is huge. He, like, doubles the size of Rome during this time period. And who gets this land? Good question, isn't it? The city of Rome is in constant revolts because they're ticked off at the senators because the senators won't let them buy any land. These are our three players. This right here is Marcus Crassus, okay? He's the rich one who really did beat Spartacus. That's him. This, don't laugh, be nice, is Pompey. <laughs> uh, poor guy. That's Pompey. This is Julius Caesar's statue. Well,
Crassus goes to the east. Uh, let me put this map back up. See, Crassus still hasn't had his big moment because Pompey took his moment from him when he beat uh, Spartacus. So Crassus decides to go to the east. Somewhere over here, I don't remember what it's called, it's a P name, but somewhere over here, he decides to go take over this place and he dies in the process. In fact, you know how he dies? I'm so terrible, I love this. He gets like um, melted uh, gold, like they melt down gold and pour it in his mouth. Um, they do it as a, like a mockery of him because he was so rich, okay? Um, but yeah, anyway, they uh, they melt down gold and pour melted molten heat gold down his throat. Can you imagine how bad that would hurt? I think the actual, like you suffocate, but it's all burning and yeah. So Crassus did. Pompey's like. Technically the triumvirate, it didn't last very long. It's kind of gone, okay. Crassus, dead. And look what Pompey does. Look what Caesar's doing though. Pompey finds out that Caesar is allowing people to buy land right after they've conquered it. His military men. So like, we go up there, we go across the hall, we take over that classroom, right? And I let you, the five strongest of you, if you have money, I let you buy land. You give the money to me, I'm going to take the money and I'll give it to the Senate later. That's a loophole, man. That's the way that some plebeians are able to get land. Caesar's uh, not as stupid as he looks, is he? Pompey finds out and Pompey's like, what the heck? That's what I wanted to do for my men, but it's not legal. Why is it not legal? Well, because there's not a law that allows them to do that. Hmm. So Pompey threatens Caesar like, war like we'll we'll strip you of all your stuff and caesar's like nah i'm not dealing with this crap caesar's going to take his military men his men and they're going to march on the city of rome you're like what does that mean well he doesn't really want to attack rome he kind of wants it to be more of a threat. I mean, Rome is his home, Rome home. <laughs> um, but he's like, you're not, you're not gonna strong arm me. You're not gonna threaten me. So this begins the civil war of Rome. Okay, when we think civil war, we think like American civil war, where like brother fought brother and all that drama. Uh, that's not really what happened here. Um, it's it, Rome, the city is not split down the middle. All right. Whenever Caesar takes his military um, into Italy, he, he crosses the Rubicon. That's the river. I'm sorry. But he crosses the river into Italy. Uh, the senators all tuck tail and run. They run. They're like, ah. So does Pompey. Pompey's a general and he's a big deal general. So why does he run? Well, most of Pompey's men are stationed in the east. They're stationed in Greece. Pompey's in Italy. So he's like, uh, I need my men to fight Caesar. So he runs to go get his men. Okay. When Caesar actually gets to the city of Rome, there's no government. The senators have all run away. They're all in hiding or Pompey's getting his military. There's absolute chaos in the city. There are, I mean, it's just, it's chaos. Y'all have this mindset that, yeah, anarchy is awesome. 
no government. That's what I want. Uh, no, you don't. It would be the purge every day. You're like, cool. Yeah, it's cool until someone purges you, your dog, and your family. So see, here's the thing. Rome, the city, is just chaotic. Caesar gets to Rome, leaves some of his men there to kind of calm things down, okay? Really, he's trying to get supporters. Caesar is so politically and militarily smart. He's getting supporters. That's what he's doing. Meanwhile, he goes to Greece. He's following Pompey. He finds out where he is. He's following Pompey, okay? Now, Pompey's not there. Ugh, Caesar just missed him. When he gets to Greece, Pompey has just left. Where did he go? Egypt. What? Why would he go to Egypt? Okay, look. Here's Rome, right? Pompey went to get his military over here, right? Here's Egypt. Pompey... I don't remember exactly what Pompey did, but Pompey did something a long time ago to help Egypt, gave him money or something, I don't remember. And he feels like maybe Egypt now is when you should pay me back by joining with me and helping me to defeat Julius Caesar. So Pompey comes down to Egypt to meet the king of Egypt. The king's name is Ptolemy. It doesn't really matter, but Ptolemy. He's like 14. Pompey's like, I don't know, I'd have to double check his age, 50 something, maybe older. Pompey goes to him and says, okay, so I did something for you. Now I need you to do something for me. I need you to join your military with mine and help me defeat Julius Caesar. I think Pompey felt like he could push or like overcome Ptolemy. And Ptolemy is not a strong king, okay? But I think Ptolemy thought, oh, he's, just, he's just a kid. Guys, that's not much younger than you. Can some of you just be pushed? No. Ptolemy has his own problems in Egypt. His problem is his wife. slash sister. Ew, remember we talked about this already, okay? Um, the Egyptian pharaohs, yes, they married, them. okay, whatever, okay? Yeah. Um, his sister is older than him, and sister slash wife, and they were supposed to rule the kingdom together, but they've had a falling out, and now Ptolemy is trying to kill her. Guys, people liked her better. They liked her rule better. And so they listened to her. They didn't listen to him. Um, he is trying to kill her for like power issues. Okay. So she's in hiding. We have kind of an issue in, 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 in what is it called? Egypt that we have going on in Rome where you have this power struggle. And Pompey comes in and says, hey, you kid, it's time to pay me back. Ptolemy's like, no, who do you think you are? I'm a king. You're just a senator. Ptolemy has Pompey killed. <laughs> Oops. By the time Julius Caesar gets to Egypt to find uh, Pompey, he goes before Ptolemy and he says, hey, um, has Pompey been here because we're, we're in this power struggle? He's a little bit more humble in front of Ptolemy. Julius Caesar isn't in the Senate anymore. He's not a consul anymore. He's just a general. He is a little bit more respectful. Ptolemy presents Caesar with Pompey's head. <laughs> And you would think Caesar would be like, yes, thank you. Caesar's mad because he feels like Pompey, this great general, shouldn't have been, you know, um, shouldn't have had that kind of disgraceful death. And he certainly shouldn't be 
parading his head around on a silver platter. So Caesar sees that as very like disrespectful. Ptolemy says, um, I actually want you to help me with my sister. Well, Caesar's mad at Ptolemy. So he says, um, no. So Ptolemy arrests Julius Caesar. Do you feel like this is a daytime soap opera or something? Yeah. Julius Caesar um, is arrested for a while and he's sitting in prison in Egypt. His military's sitting on the shores waiting for him. <laughs> and somehow Cleopatra, Ptolemy's wife's sister, comes in to see Caesar. She had to have, you know, snuck in or whatever. The story is, guys, this is probably not true, but the story is that she was brought in, wrapped up in a rolled carpet, like a giant carpet that's rolled up and she's wrapped in it. Yeah, you know, probably not true, but that's the story. Um, so anyway, Cleopatra comes in and says, hey, you want out? I'll get you out of prison if you'll help me with Ptolemy. Caesar's like, done. So Ptolemy ends up dead. <laughs> yeah. Cleopatra ends up on the throne by herself. And then Julius Caesar decides to stay there because Cleopatra is just this hot young thing and they have a <clears throat> affair. Guys, she's like, I would have to double check ages. Somewhere between 16 and 18, I think. And he's got to be in his late 40s by now. He stays there for a while, has this hot thing with her. She's the new queen. And he goes back to Rome. Rome doesn't really have a government. Rome's a mess. I mean, technically, the senators are still in charge. But what's going on in Rome? Caesar goes back to Rome. Okay, all the drama I just talked about is in your notes right here. Do you see what I mean by your notes are just a skeleton of what you need? You're like, how did Caesar win? Well, I just told you. When all the senators get back to Rome and peace comes and everything's okay, that's a lie. Everything isn't okay. There are, I mean, people have been revolting for, I don't know, 10 years or whatever. Um, actually, it's longer than that. Since the death of the Gracchus brothers. It's been, it's been years. There are now food shortages. Let me see how long this video is getting. Okay. There are now food shortages. And so now there's famine. People are dying. Caesar's like, I know where to get food. I have an ally in Egypt. So he goes to the Senate and says, look, I can get Cleopatra to send us grain cheaper than normal. I can, I can, I can do that. It's called bedroom politics. Ugh. To be allowed to do what he needs to do to help the city of Rome, the people, the famine. Legally, he can't do it because he's not a senator or whatever. The Senate agrees to make him dictator for a year. I have read some things that say it wasn't a year, it was 10 years. Okay, 10 years, one year, whatever. Uh, he's made dictator for a little bit of time. Well, Caesar will later declare himself dictator for life. Is he starting to look like a tyrant to you? Okay, listen. Historically speaking, we don't know if Caesar would have ended up being a tyrant or not. Um, again, spoiler, he's gonna die before he gets that far. Okay, um, it looks like it though. It, it looks like that typical pattern where 
you get the people's support and then look right look look what's next you actually do things to help the people then you declare yourself dictator for life that doesn't look good but i don't know this is just total sherilyn opinion okay i don't know that it's fair to say that he's a dictator because he never got that far we don't know but it does look like it i'm not gonna lie when someone gives you power for a year and you say, okay, now I have power for the rest of my life, that doesn't look good. <laughs> I know, it doesn't look good. But Caesar's now in charge. And he is going to start doing some reforms. Um, typically, we don't think of a reform as a bad change. A reform is a good thing. The things that he's going to do for the, the, the Rome, the Rome, whatever, for Rome, it's good. I'll, I'll go over it later, but it's good. But how much power does he have? And there's all this other drama going on, too, with his longtime girlfriend. Yeah, not Cleopatra. Oops. His wife died a long time ago. He did have a daughter. Ooh, you know what? Just a little tidbit of information. His daughter, when she was like 16, married Pompey, who was like 60. So that actually made Caesar and Pompey, I don't know, rel relatives. So that means Pompey was Julius Caesar's son-in-law, even though Pompey was older than Caesar. <laughs> this is the most messed up, fun, crazy, dumb story ever. Just a mess. So, you wanna see how it ends? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.